This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture here from our coolest mid-century modern tropical paradise of Hawaii. Today is going to be a very cool show because we talk about the coolest era that we had architecturally on the islands. And we're going to do this with our special guest today, which is Beth Iwata from Historical Y Foundation. Hi, Beth. Hi. And Don Hibbert, our representative of Dokomomo, uh, Hawaii. Hi, Don. Hi, hello. Thanks for joining us on the show. And we're going to uh, talk about an event that we're collaborating on. And it's going to be a Dokomomo event. And we, if we can get the picture number one, please. If you guys are curious what Dokomomo is, then please watch another show, which our president, Tanya, has introduced uh, not that long ago. So please look up the show. But in a nutshell, we can say at least what's behind the acronym that's documenting and conserving the modern movement. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. But today we want to do uh, talk about, we do lots of things which we talked about in the show. Today we want to talk about a special event, and maybe it's the most special annual event. And what is that about? Every year, uh, Dokomomo has a national tour day, and it's the first Saturday in October every year. Mm -hmm. and so we've been doing them now for five or six years, and this year we'll be uh, going for the first time off-island, mm -hmm. and we're going to be going over to Lihui and feature some of the modern architecture that's mm -hmm. present in mm -hmm. Lihui mm -hmm. from the 1950s and 60s. That's very exciting. And before we go there, we take a look at one of the previous events we had, if we can get the next picture for that. When was that? That was, I think, three, three, maybe four, I think it was three years, no, maybe four years ago. And we did a walking tour of uh, Kapiolani Boulevard that time. And we we're very fortunate that time. Uh, Frank Haynes, who firm designed one of the buildings, the Ken Rock building, which is now in jeopardy of possibly coming down, uh, was able to be one of our docents because when we do the tour, we have uh, people at different buildings and they'll discuss the building mm -hmm. that they're mm -hmm. with. And so Frank could give everybody a first-hand information not only about the design, but his firm also had their offices in the building when they were designing the state capitol. So mm -hmm. it was a very informative uh, really awesome. Presentation. And that's, that's what we do. We try to get eyewitnesses who had, were offers in the mm -hmm. projects. That's mm -hmm. the best if we can get that. And Beth, can you help out uh, explaining the picture at the very top left here, the little one? Oh, well, actually, we happen to have this uh, booklet here today. This is the Preservation Honor Awards. Historic Hawaii Foundation um, annually holds the awards. And uh, we honor um, different preservation projects and preservation media projects, as well as individuals. So this, this past May, we um, happened to honor oh. this guy here, <laughs> Don Hibbert, <laughs> for his achievements um, in helping preserve many homes and buildings throughout the state. And, and all his work in um, as an architectural historian. So congratulations, Don. Thank you. So well deserved. Congratulations, <laughs> well Don. <laughs> awesome. So stepping back a little bit, when we get the next picture, um, usually, if uh, mid-century modern is considered to exist at all on our islands in Hawaii, it's uh, like for example, there's these um, uh, publishers out of the UK. One is the Wall Paper Magazine, which is the top one. And then the bottom one is the Monocle City Guide. And they're both um, considered um, our islands uh, to be worth uh, reporting on architecture. But then, uh, no surprise to me, because these are pretty critical journalists, they don't pick any of the new stuff. They predominantly pick the old stuff, which is the good stuff. But both of them basically um, pick buildings that are predominantly in our capital city of Honolulu. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a little bit surprising, I guess, when we get the next picture. So if the general public and audience Googles the term Kauai, I did that, and this pops up, right? So it's predominantly nature in its most beautiful way. And uh, you see one resort down there, never mind. But anything else seems that architecture is off the radar 
of the island. So it's really sort of provocatively polemic almost to uh, suggest we're walking on Kauai. So if we can get the next picture, which is our pitch, maybe you guys can talk about that here, what that is. And now we start to talk about a, a booklet you guys have been putting together. Well, we, for the walking tour every year, we uh, put out a, a little pamphlet that goes with so people can see general information about the buildings that we'll be either stopping at and looking at close or just walking by. So every year we put out a little pamphlet. Uh, in this case, we're doing it on Lihui. But this year, uh, we're doing more than just our walking tour. Uh, Docomomo is partnering with Historic Hawaii, or they're partnering with us. I don't know which. Mm -hmm. But uh, essentially, um, we'll be putting out a book as well that'll be talking about the entire island. Uh, we have a little series of booklets started Historic Hawaii has been publishing. And so this is the one on uh, Hawaii Modern. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be doing a new one this year on Kauai Modern, mm -hmm. so which I think will also be a nice addition. In addition, uh, Historic Hawaii is sponsoring several talks, which maybe Beth can talk about. Sure. Um, so the walking tour will be on Saturday, October 7th, starting at 3 p.m. Um, for a couple hours, and then have a finish with the Pauhana. Um, that's all happening. Um, people can meet at Lihui Civic Center on Rice Street. And then um, the evening before in Lihui, we'll have a presentation, which is um, is, you know, hope, we hope to share some of the buildings, but also just talk about Lihui and how times change and put the buildings within it, the historic and social context, and um, kind of do talk story, you know, mm -hmm. trigger some memories about their town and, mm -hmm. and just encourage people to um, take, some, take a moment to, you know, think about where they are and that, you know, there are some very valuable buildings there. Mm -hmm which we now in the following will share some with mm -hmm. you and show you some sort of glimpses of it, yeah. right? And also, I think Beth, not only will we be doing that talk on Kauai, but we'll also be doing it in Honolulu right. on the, the following on, Wednesday. Right, Wednesday, October 11th, there'll mm -hmm. be this, a similar presentation and talk story at the Ward Village Courtyard. Mm -hmm. So all of this information is available um, on our website. Um, historicway.org and mm -hmm. um, there's registration and also you can purchase the, the Kauai Modern Booklet which is going to come out soon. Mm -hmm. And that's not to confuse with what we're going to show you soon which is basically the booklet for the tour but you're working on another one which gives you even more information and more depth. Right. And what we have on the screen right now is if, you, if we got you guys already excited which we hope you can go frantically and you know uh, fast to Eventbrite to serve your spot, right? Mm -hmm. This is what that is about. Yeah. These are basically screenshots from the Eventbrite announcement, and you can also see the price tag for that. It's up there, right? So it's little money for a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? They're well spent. Yeah. Exactly, and it's a good chance to go to Kauai for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a three-day weekend. <laughs> yeah. So uh, maybe we bring number eight, picture number eight up. This is a simple, gives you a simple uh, location pin. Um, maybe we want to, who doesn't know Lihui, maybe you guys want to say a couple more words about what Lihui is on mm -hmm. Kauai? It's, it's the capital of Kauai, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it was uh, made the capital primarily because it is in a central location and with the North Shore on one side and the West side on the other side. Mm -hmm. and so. Uh, but it's, it's the commercial hub of, this, of the island. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So, and during the 50s and 60s, uh, it, it enhanced its position that it already had. And that's one of the main reasons why we're there, because they did a major facelift of the mm -hmm. entire city at that time. Mm -hmm. And the meeting point is pointed out on this page here, right? It's yes. Like yeah. It's, yeah, right near the airport. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, the next picture is going to be uh, zooming in a little closer. It gives you the map of um, Lihui. 
And uh, what do we see? What are the black dots and what are the pictures on the right side okay. of the page? The, the black dots are the stops that we'll be making on the walking tour. Mm -hmm. And so it'll just be, it's a little map. So essentially we'll be making a big circle and mm -hmm. it takes around a half hour to walk the entire mm -hmm. thing, but then you'll be stopping at eight different places and mm -hmm. the buildings will be discussed at that mm -hmm. time. And what secret is behind the right side of the page oh. and the little I spy modernism Oh, that's, term. Uh, we, we, last couple of years we, pe we've been finding people enjoy a little scavenger hunt along the way. So those are little building details or elements that people can keep an eye out for when they're walking mm -hmm. around. And, mm -hmm. and if they identify them correctly, we'll be giving them a, a copy of the Kauai Modern mm -hmm. Booklet that we're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's sort of the educator part in me, it sort of proves one of my architecture theory and history 101 sort of lessons to the emerging generations like that real good buildings get better the closer you look. Unfortunately, with the modern buildings that many don't recognize as being good, it's the opposite. They look good from a distance, but the closer you get, the more kind of cheap and kind of cheesy they are. But with modernism, this is different. So this is sort of our encouragement to zoom in and look at its pores and look at its making and you know the materiality and the shadows cast. And yeah, yeah, I think during the 50s, it's very true that the, the level of craftsmanship was much higher mm -hmm. than workmanship. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <clears throat> so let's uh, look at some of the projects sort of as appetizers for you guys to really now go. Let's look at some of them. And so let's go to the booklet. And number uh, 10 uh, is now showing us one of the pages of the booklet. But we're going to zoom right in and go to the picture at the very top right. And if we can get the next picture for that. This, um, <coughs> uh, no, one more. Yeah, this one here. So the, the bottom right picture is also referring to a show we just did about the architect, about the building, and I'll leave it up to Don, because of many reasons, to talk about that architect, because mm -hmm. you're very associated with mm -hmm. him, together with mm -hmm. your partner with whom we did the show. Right, yeah, Jack Gilmar and I are working on a book on Alfred Price, which I almost hate to say, because people keep saying, when is it gonna be done? <laughs> <laughs> when is it done? <laughs> far away uh, still. <laughs> but Alfred Price uh, is best known for his work with uh, he did the Arizona Memorial uh, we just registered the Honolulu old the old zoo entrance at the Honolulu Zoo awesome and so th those are two of his works that are very familiar to people but he also did the ILWU halls he did the one on in Honolulu on Atkinson Boulevard he also did one on Maui which no longer exists this beautiful structure which he did on Kauai and another one he did in Hilo as well. But he uh, very much is working in a very modern vocabulary. And this is 1956. It's one of, give me one of the first modern mm -hmm. buildings to hit the island of mm -hmm. Kauai. And it's very striking with its use of local materials, the coral rock, he uses sunscreens, the A-frame, all of which were very uh, uh, new for the time. Yeah. And we could characterize it for good reason as being modern, but I go further and I call it timeless. And that's for a selfish reason, because I'm just working in Germany on a project that's sort of rediscovering the benefits of an A-frame. So it's a very universal, very uh, sort of timeless kind of type that he sort of you know, did here very early uh, mid-century. Let's look, and we're going to, I mean, the, the pictures we picked here are for some reasons, and they <coughs> one is that we show you the whole broad variety of typologies. So this is pretty much an exhibit hall. The next picture, number 12, what typology is that? Again, a very modern, this is almost across the street from the ILW U-Haul. And again, a very strong design statement, and uh, it was done by Clifford Young, who is a Honolulu architect. Uh, Young is my best known, he worked with I.M. Pei on the East-West Center in Honolulu. Uh, and that was the main reason he got this commission. Uh, there was a, uh, a board that was selecting who will be the architect, and they were impressed with what he had done up there. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, brought him to Kauai to work on the convention hall. Uh, this has a, a major uh, visual attraction with the uh, dome. Uh, the dome is uh, framed 
in timber and and the architect was very uh, excited about the use of glue lamb, which was a, a new technology which mm -hmm. was just coming in and which allowed you to have a very large spans, which mm -hmm. before you would have to interrupt with columns mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. So this convention hall is very open and uh, and also, again, if you look, you'll see incorporated local stone in the, mm -hmm. in the design. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's very much a regional modern building. Yeah, yeah. And that's something for the emerging generation to just be aware how innovative these mid-century guys were. Whereas today, I allow myself to say, sometimes we get the worst of the worst from somewhere else. And way back, we're getting the best of the best. And people came here were so stunned by the beauty of nature that they said, well, we got to really do, do the best that we can here. And as far as innovation of technology and our emerging architects look into cross-laminated timber these days, which is pretty much the same technology. And how can you update that and using Albicia and reclaim it? Mm -hmm. We have a project by Joey Valenti who is doing that. It's the same kind of, you know, um, a rounded uh, truss structure. Let's go to the next page and uh, look at a couple other buildings and building types. And we zoom in here at the very bottom left. And we see that more in detail in the next picture. Which project is that? That's the Lihui Public Library. And again, this is a Honolulu architect, Stephen Oyakawa. Oyakawa, uh, studied and worked with Frank Lloyd Wright for many years. He was born in Hawaii, and then after uh, working with Wright, he returned to Honolulu and uh, worked here. And again, a very dramatic building. Again, a regional with using lava rock for grounding it on the bottom, but a very sweeping paraboloid roof with a very wide fascia. Mm -hmm. And so very dramatic. And uh, again, ex an exhilarating, uh, okay, yes, here's the future coming. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it was all part of that. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite building. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's pretty amazing. And again, surprise, surprise, it's on this little island which mm -hmm. people hardly ever, you know, would, would think of uh, cutting edge mid century modern architecture. As we have another example, which is the next picture. This is a, by another architect who's, uh, you know, has done several buildings in uh, in Honolulu. And mm -hmm. who's that? This is by Edwin Bauer, and Edwin Bauer came to Hawaii during World War II and actually worked for the military during the war. And then he stayed after the war and started his own practice. And he's done a number of very innovative buildings. Uh, in 1965, Lihui Plantation was starting to. Uh, thinking, okay, we want to keep Lihui as the commercial core, and they tore down a bunch of old buildings to build a new shopping center. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the buildings they tore down was the building that uh, Hawaii National Bank, which is now First Hawaiian Bank, was in, as well as their own office building, Lihui Plantation Office Building. And uh, that Bauer got to design both of those buildings, and mm -hmm. right on the they shared a parking lot on the other side of the street, mm -hmm. and uh, again using uh, local coral stone uh, in both buildings to clad the buildings, but also a very modern style of building with the uh, very interesting uh, eave line with the cutout rectangles in it, so you get these different shadows all mm -hmm. day long, mm -hmm. and, uh, but also a very formal building. So yeah. it was a, a formal type of uh, modernism, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. also very regional. Yeah, yeah. And as we're referring to other shows, sort of mm -hmm. in self-interest, and to give you more, there might be one coming up, because our fellow board member, John Williams, expressed interest to do a show yeah. together about um, that specific mm -hmm. architecture. And indeed, when we do the tour, John will be talking about that building. Very, <laughs> very good. So another reason for you guys to, mm -hmm. you have to join the tour. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next picture is the, one of the last pages from the booklet of the tour, and we're going to zoom in to the next picture at the very top left. Yeah, this is part of the shopping center that replaced the first Hawaiian bank mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this was done by a Seattle architect, John Graham. And it's sort of like a spaceship, and it's part of the whole spaceship and uh, Sputnik era and thinking. Uh, John Graham is best known today for doing the Space Needle in uh, 
Seattle, mm -hmm. but he also did La Ronde Restaurant and Ala Moana Center mm -hmm. before he did the Space mm -hmm. Needle. Mm -hmm. And he also uh, did the Ely Kai Hotel here in town. And he was very, he was hired, he was probably the top of the line shopping center mm -hmm. designer mm -hmm. in the West Coast at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. So he had been, done numerous shopping malls in the mainland. And so mm -hmm. when Lihui Plantation picked up, yes, let's take hi him and his reputation. And obviously, he already had Ala Moana underway. So yes, we'll have the same architect on Kauai working mm -hmm. on our building. Mm -hmm. This uh, this building was the third phase of the shopping center. It was housed the office buildings, but it also be it has uh, shops as well in the building. Sears moved in as one of the anchors, and mm -hmm. the other end was a uh, uh, Kauai uh, shopping, the mall, the store, I can't remember the name of it, mm -hmm. uh, food market or something. Okay. But uh, now it's all, it's been converted, it's now all county offices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And once again, at the bottom right of that last picture, you can see our referencing to another show that are learning from the past. Uh, for the future, a fellow DeSoto Brown and I did a show about, and we call this the coolest, um, I think, commercial building because the Alamoana building had vertical retractable louvers and was mm -hmm. self-shading itself and the flying saucer mm -hmm. topped it and that's as a form, you know, uh, reminiscent of, of this building here that we see. We're gonna uh, jump on and conclude with uh, two more buildings. One is the next picture. Which one is that and which architect? That's, that's the state office building in Lihui. It was done by Shoso Kagawa. Uh, Kagawa is a very interesting architect himself in that he uh, was a member of the 442nd during World War II and after the war he, using the GI Bill he became the first Asian American to be accepted into Columbia School of Architecture and the first one to graduate. He was also the first mm -hmm. person from Hawaii mm -hmm. to go to Columbia School of Architecture wow. and uh, he designed several a, a number of government mm -hmm. buildings around the state mm -hmm. including the Kalani Moku building right across from the state capitol wow. building. And that's certainly a very modern metropolitan-looking building. So yeah. Lihui was the metropolitan mm -hmm. for Kauai. Right. And, it and, and actually, you know, it's very formalist building, mm -hmm. and uh, that it's that's what government wants to portray as mm -hmm. its image. Mm -hmm. And so you get that sort of image yeah. with, for the state. Which also is then sort of the same case with the last project we're going to show you on the next picture, which is also a permanent background. Yeah, this is the uh, Kauai Museum building, and originally when it was built in 1960, it was done also by a uh, Honolulu architectural firm, Merrill, Sims, and Rorick. Um, it adjoins right next to it the, uh, what was the old Lihui Library, and uh, that building is also a lava rock building, with a but it has a classical front, mm -hmm. and this building was built right next to it, and um, it incorporates the same concrete courses that was used in the old building, which mm -hmm. was done by Hartwood in 1920s. Mm -hmm. And you also wrote a book about him? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this building was built right next to it. And then when the, the Oyakawa Library was built, the mm -hmm. historical the museum got the library mm -hmm. building as well, and then they connected the two. And that big window you see in the building is, mm -hmm. was put in at that time. Okay. So we're getting towards the end of the show, and my last two cents are two pictures. One is the next picture, which also uh, says there is stuff that, there's enough stuff out there, including stuff that we, there's no chance we can possibly cover. Also, some stuff that we can't show anymore because it's not around anymore. And that's one of our main missions, is to basically raise awareness and appreciation for these old jewels and keep people away from tearing it down or from altering is it so significantly so it won't be considered authentic anymore and that's unfortunately the case will be the case with the coco palm resort that also the soda and i ran a show about so if you guys are interested watch that show but uh closing on a more optimistic note the next picture is um we also have to say we uh, suggest uh, accommodation for lodging but we don't prescribe it so you guys you know follow our suggestions or go on your own as i did when i was invited by my mentor uh, nebraska mentor bill borner and his uh, partner rebecca hi 
the two of you uh, two times, um, I choose the Kauai Inn, which to my understanding is one, if not the oldest, hotel uh, on Kauai. And even there around the pool, you see a, sculpt a sculpture by the renowned mid-century sculptor Brownlee. So uh, what we want to do is encourage people to just like go above and beyond what we suggest. Ours are just appetizers to create your appetite and then go from there. So with that, I very much uh, thank you both. And I hope have you back, Beth, uh, in particular, to talk a little bit more uh, about Historic uh, Hawaii Foundation, great. if you don't mind. Thank you. It would be great to do a show just about that. Too. And yeah, thanks to the two of you in promoting our event together. And hopefully now we will be sold out in no time, <laughs> right? Of course. <laughs> and so yeah, thank you both for coming. Thanks, Martin. Thank you, Martin. All right. And see you guys all next week for another episode of Human Humane Architecture. And then until then, stay self uh, and yourself and safe and happy. Bye bye. <laughs>